As web designers, we're always looking for a way to make sure that our website is fast and optimized to make sure that it loads in as quickly as possible and therefore makes it a very usable website. Well, today we're going to be taking a look at Toolkit for Elementor, a new plugin suite that offers us a lot of really cool controls over making sure that our website is optimized. You also have the very, very useful feature to go completely themeless. What that does is it disables anything to do with your theme and therefore gives you a completely blank canvas. So when you're using Elementor, you can then leverage the power of the theme builder without the need to have that underlying theme in place, taking up valuable resources. So let's take a look at how we can use Toolkit for Elementor to start building faster, more optimized websites. Now, before we jump in, it's worth noting that this is still very early in development. There are some already great features integrated into Toolkit and a lot of really cool features that are being added at the moment. So in beta and in alpha testing. So this is one of those things that to start off with, it might give you a few really useful tools, but it's going to grow into something that I think is going to be invaluable for anybody that's developing websites We're using WordPress and Elementor. Okay, so I'll put the link to this in the description below so you can check this out. This isn't sponsored. I'm not being paid for this in any way, shape or form. I was given access to this for free, but everything I'm going to say in here is all my honest opinion. And as always, I'm going to let you decide what you think of this. So we've got it downloaded. We just need to go in and install it. So I've jumped over into the dashboard of WordPress and we're going to activate my copy of Toolkit for Elementor. Once that's activated, you're going to go over to your toolkit and then in there you're going to put in your license details. I've already gone ahead and done that and now I've got access to all the different tools. Now you'll see on this we've got four different tabs currently that we can work with. The fifth one, my license, as its name suggests, is where you put your license code. So the booster is where we can go in and start to fine tune and boost the various different settings and then compare them using GT metrics all directly inside Toolkit for Elementor, which I think is a really good way of doing things because it saves you jumping back and forth between the different windows just to test this out. And you can see I've already gone ahead and run a test on there previously where I was testing things out. As you can see, it came back pretty good. So what you can do is you can put the URL you want in, you can put where the nearest server is. For me, it would be London, UK, and then you're going to choose what browser type you're going to use, and then you're going to perform your GT metric scan. Now, we're going to come back to that a little later once we've tested a few things out. But what I want to do first of all, before we take a look at the booster, the sinker, the toolbox, and all those kinds of things, I want to jump over into themeless. Now, this is one of those things that I think is invaluable if you are working with Elementor and you don't want to rely upon a theme. Now, this is one of those things that we've had this debate and there's people that say hello is not a theme, hello is using a blank theme, all these kinds of things. Well, let's just throw that out of the window and say that Themeless, which is part of Toolkit for Elementor, works in a completely different way. This will allow you to install or have a theme set up inside WordPress, but once you disable the theme framework, none of that theme is going to be operational at all. It's not loaded at runtime, anything. All it does is it sits inside your appearance section under the themes, and if you open up the customizer, you'll see the options for that theme in there, but none of them will do anything to your design. So with that out of the way, let's take a little look. Let's just enable this. We're going to say, yes, we want this enabled. Now, if we take a look at the site, the page, whatever it is, we'll see that if we're using Elementor, everything will look the way you expect it to. And that's because we're using Elementor to build out the contents of the page or by using the theme builder as part of Elementor Pro. And this is the thing you have to bear in mind. You are no longer having access to any of those JavaScript libraries that are part of the theme you may have installed, any of the CSS. Everything is completely and utterly blank and therefore controlled directly inside Elementor Pro's theme builder or Elementor if you're not using Pro and using the theme building options. Now that we've enabled Themeless and I've got Elementor Pro installed, I've got no templates or nothing, no content created. So if we jump over to take a look at the home page and refresh that, you see we have a completely and utterly blank starting point. So let's run this through GT metrics and see what we get with just themeless set up on there and Elementor Pro installed. Come back in the dashboard and we're going to come back into booster and in there we're going to just test things out. So we're going to run a performance scan. We're going to set this to London UK, which is the nearest to me and I'm using Chrome. So we're going to perform the GT metrics scan, let that run through. And like I say, this is now with just basically no theme installed just Elementor and the basics of WordPress in there. So I'm going to pause this, let that run through, and we can come back and take a look at the results. And there you go. We've got a page score of 99% and a Y slow of 89%, and we've got a load time of less than a second. 
with a total page size of just over 66 kilobytes and a minimal requests being assigned to the server. So that's without any tweaking of anything we have inside minification, apply lazy load and so on. So what I'm gonna do is let's take a look at what we have now and how we start to build this out. So if we come over to our template section inside Elementor Pro, we're gonna come down and we're gonna say we want templates theme builder. What I'm going to do is in there, I'm going to create a header and a footer, and then we'll create some page content and we'll assign that and we'll test things out again. Okay, so I come into header and all I'm going to do is just choose new header. Header is the option. I'm going to call this general, sorry, let's just call this default header. And we'll just choose a template that's part of Elementor itself, just so we've got something loaded in. And um, we'll just choose something like this. That'll work fine. I'm not too bothered about what I'm choosing. This is just to show you how easy it is to start building things out. Now, I've already gone in and assigned things like the navigation. We've got the logo set up. And to get rid of the search bar on the right-hand side, we're going to click on there, delete that. And we're just going to get rid of that column as well. I don't want that on there. And we'll just publish this. Add a condition, save the entire site, and save and close. We're going to do the same thing now for our footer. So we're going to exit out of this. And we're going to come into our theme builder again and quickly come in and create a new footer. So again, we're just gonna create one from the default templates that we have as part of Elementor. Footer, there we go. Create our template, and we'll just choose one which I think is kind of in keeping. And we'll just choose something along the lines of this one will do. We'll insert that one in there. Once we've done that, that's fine. We'll publish it and we'll assign it to the entire site. So we'll add a condition, entire site, save and close, and we've now done. So you come back over to our test page and refresh this. We're gonna see now we've got our header and footer in place, but obviously no content at the moment. So let's come back out of Elementor and I've already gone ahead and created a simple basic page. So if we come in and take a look at that, we're gonna come into all pages. I've created my home page and I'll edit that with Elementor so you can see what I currently have set up in there. And as you can see, we've got a typical header at the top. We've got some text, some buttons, just some basic styling, a very simple homepage kind of thing. So what we need to do is come back out of this. I'm going to come down into our settings section and reading. I'm going to set that to be the homepage. And there we go. So we'll save that. So we've now created a very simple page using a header and footer built as a template from Elementor Pro and some content for the homepage itself. Again, if we come back over now, refresh this and we'll see there's our content all laid out nice and neat and tidy now the thing to remember with this is this is all completely neatly built styled controlled and everything else through elemental and elemental pro this is none of this is being done by a theme so every single element has been styled inside elemental or by the global styles we can set inside elemental itself okay so i'm going to come back into elemental i'm going to come down to toolkit for elemental and we're going to run a page test again. So just making sure that is set to all exactly the same. So we'll perform a GT metric scan and we'll see the differences now. And there we go. The scores are in and you can see our page speed has dropped a tiny amount. Our Y slow has dropped a bit more. Our load time is just over 1.2 seconds. And you can see we're around 750 kilobytes with 50 requests. Now if we want to, we can take a look at the full report and we can see all the details inside there. And you can see this gives us a complete breakdown. Obviously, if you're using the actual uh, GT metrics, you can see a lot more information directly inside there and you can see what's slowing things down. But that gives you a good starting point. So we've seen how we can easily tap into using the themeless option and start with a blank slate. We've also seen we can run the GT metric scans. Now let's take a look at minification and so on and see what that'll do as well. So we come over to this, and this is one of those areas that I think Toolkit is definitely focused on in this particular build, is all about optimizing everything you do to make it as quick as possible. And also, it just means then you have one less plugin to deal with for optimizing and caching your website. This is a great thing because it means you can just control everything and it's one nice, simple interface to deal with all these different sort of options. Okay. As you can see, we've got Minify CSS, Combined CSS, and the same then for the JavaScript. So let's just enable all of those. We'll save and apply that. And this time we're gonna come up with the GT metrics itself. And from there, we're gonna run the same test. Reason being, I just want to see exactly what's going on behind the scenes and if we can tweak things. So we're gonna let that run through GT metrics and we're gonna take a little look in more detail at what's actually going on when we've applied that minification and the results that we get in comparison to what we had previously. 
And there we go, with that one simple set of tweaks, we've already increased our page speed score and our Y-slow score is even better again. 1.8 seconds load time with pretty much no difference in the page size, but our requests have come down, well, way over half, from 50 down to 21. So just with that simple optimization directly inside the toolkit, we've already made a big, big difference. I'm gonna come back over now into our toolkit and let's take a look at some of the other things we have. So we've got lazy load if you want to do that for both images and iframes and videos. And if you want to, you can tweak your server settings by applying gzip, keep alive connections and so on. Obviously, read through these things to make sure that anything you apply, you understand what's going on under the hood. But you should find quite good increases in speed when you start to tweak things and configure things to make sure that everything is optimized. And like I say, it means there's one less plugin you have to deal with, all done inside Toolkit for Elementor. So really, really pleased with the way this is starting out and I'm really excited to see what comes next in the sort of process in the next version. Okay, so we've taken a look at the booster setup. We've taken a look at Themeless and how that works. What exactly is Syncer? Well, if we click and open that up, you can see we have, I've already enabled it. So once you enable it, it'll show you all of the sites you currently have activated inside your account. You can see I've got one which is on a local server and one which is the current site that we're taking a look at. So what I can do is, if I click on any of these, it'll pull in and find out any of the templates associated with that particular website. Then all I can do is I can come into any of those that I want and I can just click import template. It immediately imports it in. Now the thing to remember here is you may be thinking, well, there's already some services out there that do this via the cloud. And that's the problem. They do it via the cloud which is perfectly fine if you've got an internet connection and that service is up online with no problems. But once there's a problem and you don't have those, then you have no access to those files. Bit of a bummer. With this system, this just links directly through your account to your website that actually has that template on there. And I can just simply click to import that template directly from that website, directly into the website we're currently working on. And as you can see, it's all organized in exactly the same way you'd expect it to inside Elementor's theme builder itself. Currently, we're not seeing any thumbnails for this, but as you can see in version 1.1, that's something they'll add in. So when you've got a lot of different templates, you can see exactly which template you're loading in and using. Really quite a cool setup. So the Syncer is one of those things very simple by nature, but can be very, very useful, especially if you sort of create a central repository for tons and tons of files, or you just want to share designs across different sort of websites. Really, really cool. I like it. Okay, so the final thing is Toolbox. If we click and open up Toolbox, this is where you can go in and add various different pieces of code to your website. You can see we've got the code manager at the top, which allows us to insert code into the header into the opening body tag or insert into the footer. So if you're looking for a super simple way of just adding in the code, JavaScript code, for example, for your Google Analytics, you can drop that directly inside here. If you want access and reference JavaScript libraries, like jQuery, for example, well, you could drop that code in there as well into the relevant location, and you can start accessing that and then using that inside your designs as and where necessary. Now, currently, the Manage Custom Code option isn't available to you. This is something they're talking about using an external code manager like Code Snippets plugin and so on. So that's something that, well, I'm not really going to cover that in this particular video. But what you can see, hopefully, by a Toolkit for Elementor, and like I say, this is still version 1.01. There's already a ton of very useful features in there. And if you are someone that wants to build completely from a blank slate without having that remaining content left as part of your website through the theme, even if it's something as simple and lightweight as Hello Theme, this is going to give you that starting point where that's completely disabled, taken out of your code, and you end up working with a very, very clean blank slate. Now for me, I'm really excited to see where they take this and I'm looking forward to testing some of the beta versions of this out to see some of the features they're bringing in in the next version and the version after that, which I know we should have access to quite soon. So I can't wait to see what's going on with that. Optimization in this, already great. The themeless option, I really do like that. Like I say, it gives me a great starting point. Is it a particularly cheap plugin? Eh, that's debatable. I mean, for me, it's one of those things that I think if you're paying this for this for one website, I don't really think it would be an outlay unless, of course, it's a good project that's going to make you a decent amount of money. However, if you are working with multiple clients, then spreading that cost across, say, 10 different clients, well, you're talking $10 per client, which 
isn't exactly a huge amount of money and for what it gives you right now and what it's going to give you in the future i think it's something definitely worth keeping an eye on and potentially investing in if you want that complete blank slate and you want to do away with a couple of plugins things to do with optimizing your site and also adding javascript and things like that in there while getting rid of the theme definitely worth checking out and taking a look now speaking of checking it out link is in the description below you can take a look and you can find out exactly what's going on with toolkit for elemental bookmark it keep an eye on it if you don't want it right now i think it's something that's going to be very very valuable in the future well as always all the links are in the description below and if you've got any comments questions or feedback on this video drop those in the comment section I'd love to get your opinion on Toolkit for Elemental. If it's something you've tested, something you're looking at to try out, or if this is your first sort of view of it, let me know in the comment section. If you want to get more of WordPress, consider taking a look at the videos you can see on screen right now. They're going to help you get a lot more out of your WordPress and your websites. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.